Hello and welcome to New Frontiers on CCTV International. I'm Ji Xiaojun in Beijing. And today we're continuing our investigation into events at the dawn of Chinese history in and around a place known as Huangdi City. The Battle of Zhuolu, fought nearly 5,000 years ago, is one of the most famous battles in Chinese history. And one of the key players in it was a mysterious figure called Chi Yu. Legend has it that Chi Yu was killed in the battle by the army of Huangdi, the Yellow Emperor. But Chi Yu's soldiers, out of loyalty to their fallen general, hid his body and buried it in the secret place. Well, Archaeologists and historians down through the centuries have naturally been keen to find Chiyo's last resting place. Eventually, attention focused on a village called Tasi. In August 1996, however, Ren Changhua returned to the village to undertake a more detailed study. And this time, he and his colleagues came announcing their real identities and their purpose. Learning what it was they wanted, the village leaders hastily called in tomb keeper Zhou De Rui. He proceeded to fire a question at Ren Changhua that left the latter even more confused. Zhou Nango 这是买的谁呀 According to Zhou De Rui, his father, grandfather and great-grandfathers all worked as keepers of this tomb, and he had no idea how many generations had passed since his family had taken on this responsibility. But he had never forgotten the words passed down to him by the old generation of his family. He was told, that originally a monk from the temple had taken care of the tomb, but that after the temple was destroyed, an old monk had stayed on to continue protecting the tomb after all the other monks had left. As Zhou De Rui's ancestor was a follower of Buddhism, upon the death of the monk, his ancestor had been entrusted with the duty of caring for the tomb. The old monk warned him, however, to never let others know the identity of the tomb's occupant, adding that if asked, he should just say that it was the tomb of Bai Lung. From that time on, the truth about the identity of who lay within the tomb was told to each successor only upon the death of each previous tomb keeper. Joel's family had kept this secret for nobody knew how many generations. The memorial stone, which bears no characters whatsoever, was shown to Ren Changhua and Zhao Yuda the first time they visited the site, but only 
after a considerable amount of persuasion was applied to Zhou Du Wei. And there is, of course, an interesting story about it. So 你的功德无量啊。<音> However, one question still remained in the minds of Zhao Yuda and Ren Changhua. If this really was Chu Yo's tomb, who had shipped his corpse from the place where he was killed 15 kilometers away at such a chaotic time? And as it happens, the local people have a story about this as well. After his area was flooded, Churyo and his soldiers beat a hasty retreat halfway up the mountain to Churyo village. Enemy troops were in hot pursuit, however, squeezing Churyo and his men from both south and north. After a fierce and bloody battle between the hunter and the hunted, Zhu Yo was seriously wounded. His men carried him from the battlefield and headed for a gully to the south. A few kilometers away, they stopped in front of a ravine. Their horses, exhausted, refused to go any further and neighed pitifully before collapsing dead on the ground. By then, Chu Yo was already dead. From that time on, this place went by a new name, Li Ma Pass, meaning the horse stops and refuses to go further. As Wang Di or the Yellow Emperor's soldiers came closer and closer, one of Chu Yo's men changed into Chu Yo's clothes before committing suicide by knocking his head against the cliff. The remaining men carried Churyo's corpse into the ravine. In the end, Wang Di's troops found the body in Churyo's clothes and, believing it to be Churyo, they triumphantly carried the body back. Wang Di instructed that before burial, the body be dismembered. But this still leaves one vital question unanswered. Just how could Churyo's body have ended up in Ta Si village? Ren Changhua's curiosity was piqued. He decided to trace the direction Zhi Yu's army had taken in their fight. The place to start, he decided, was Lima Pass. Bagua从啊有一位老农叫李健，他呢听祖上的人给他传言下来说啊，利马关就在卓路县的子方口一带。根据 the pass lies at the entrance to a ravine close to Liao Shu village. With towering peaks looming large around it, the pass makes a natural barrier against any military attack. This is Li Ma Guan. Now, Li Ma Guan's south is the Zhuo Lu Battle Field. Then, this place is already the territory of the Huang Di Yan Di. Now, the Chiyu wants to flee, can only advance towards the north. And the opponent is 是东陵山，东陵山的海拔是两千三百零六公尺，山高特别陡峭，无路可走，所以当时呢，石油的部下只能抬着他的尸体向东边这条沟前进。那么这条沟的前面呢，就是塔寺村。
To Ren Changhua's surprise, this story, along with Zhou Duwei's words, formed a complete chain of evidence about a past event, and there were no missing links. The old generations of Tarsa village and Bagua village, separated by just a few dozen kilometers, have throughout history maintained close relations. And the stories they tell about Chu Yo match perfectly. Can this be mere coincidence? Nobody can say for sure. Whether this tomb really is where Chu Yo was buried is open to debate. However, one thing is certain. Just like Huang Di and Yan Di, Chu Yo is an ancestor of the Chinese nation, and stories about him have been recorded over and over in history books and are often on the lips of Chinese people even today. The battle in Zhuo Lu between Chu Yo and Huang Di was a prelude to the merging of different peoples and the beginning of a unified Chinese nation. It is little wonder then that historians look upon this battle with the utmost respect as the beginning of Chinese civilization. One day in the spring of 1995, Gao Wen Tai farmer from Shishui Di village in Dongcheng Township, Yangyuan County, Hubei province, discovered a group of ancient tombs while reclaiming some wasteland. For archaeologists and historians, the discovery suddenly shed light on an ancient time when China was under the rule of Huang Di, but it also aroused doubts about the authenticity of records covering several thousand years of Chinese history. It was the spring of 1995, and Gao Wentai was reclaiming a piece of wasteland at a place called Jiangjialiang when he dug up a human skull. Although he felt somewhat disturbed by his find, he wanted to find out why it was there. As he continued digging, he unearthed a number of human bones. Who could have possibly buried a corpse in this place? Gao Wentai had grown up in this village and he'd never heard of a graveyard around this spot. Was this the skeleton of a murder victim? Or had this place perhaps been a graveyard in ancient times? The next day, Gao reported his discovery to township government officials and they in turn notified the Public Security Bureau. A little while later, two policemen followed Gao Wentai to the site where he'd found the bones. The policemen examined the spot carefully and having excluded the possibility of murder, they speculated that the spot might have been a graveyard of some ancient people. They then reported the find to the Hebei Provincial Administration of Cultural Relics. Tangshana,我派李军带了几个技工到杨元江家两一带呢,进行考古勘探。他们经过一个多月的勘察,发现那里的地下是守土。所谓守土层呢,就是指有人翻动过的土。我们考古主要就是靠判断土层的生熟来确定呢地下是否有东西。根据勘察的情况，我们判断那下面呢应该是有东西的。但是究竟是什么？是灰坑还是墓葬？在没有发掘之前呢，我们还是非常难以准确的
Sangan River, which originates in Shanxi Province, runs through the Nihuwan Basin from west to east and then joins the Yongding River. The Nihuwan Basin is recognized as a cradle of human civilization. During the past 80 years, archaeologists have discovered evidence of more than 100 human settlements there, dating from the Paleolithic age. The question was just how old was the Jiang Jia Liang site? In June of 1995, archaeologists from the Hebei Institute of Cultural Relics and Archaeology and the Faculty of Archaeology and Museology of Peking University began an excavation at Jiang Jia Liang. At the site, they drew lines from a point in the southwestern corner stretching to the east and north in a right angle, and then mapped out 16 square exploration pits measuring 10 by 10 meters. In effect, this meant that almost the entire Jiang Jia Liang site was to be excavated. Over the following few days, the team removed a layer of topsoil about 30 centimetres thick, and it was then they came upon a group of tombs arranged neatly in five rows from south to north. Each row had a different number of tombs, but they were all close to each other. There was a true sense of mystery about what had been uncovered. Most of the tombs were of the vertical pit in bare earth type and contained the remains of just one individual. In each case, the deceased had been laid on his or her back with the limbs bent, with the exception, that is, of the skeletons found in tomb M47. Tomb M47 yielded three human skeletons piled one upon the other. The fact that the three skeletons were in perfect condition indicated that the tomb had never been intruded upon. It also indicated that this was not the site of a reburial, and that the three deceased had been interred at the same time and laid facing upward with their limbs bent according to some strict requirement. The Juan was puzzled by this. Jiang Jia Liang Mudi is very unique. 它有着极强的个性One afternoon, the archaeologists had been working only a short while when technician Gao Wen Tai, working in tomb M75, found an object caked in soil about the size of a quail egg. It was found lying on the right side of the head of the tomb's occupant. After carefully removing the soil from the object, Gao Wen Tai still could not make out what it was. He asked Li Juan, the head of the archaeological team, to come over and take a look. When This jade carving of the pig dragon, now retained in the Hebei Provincial Museum, is cream in colour, 3.3 centimetres high and 2.6 centimetres wide. Its ears are raised high, its mouth protrudes forward, there are wrinkles in its snout carved in Italio, and its body is curved to make its head face its tail. In the middle of the pig dragon is a carefully drilled hole, and behind its ear there is a smaller hole. Clearly, the craftsmanship of this jade carving is superb. But what does this pig dragon imply? 
。哎呀，这种东西，对我们考古工作者来说是非常熟悉的。这是典型的红山文化的标志器物。Hongshan culture was named after a site of a Neolithic Age human settlement found at Hongshan by the Laoha River in Chufang City in Mongolia. It dates back 5,000 years to the later period of Yang Shao culture. The Niaohuliang site in the Liaohe River Valley is a representative site of Hongshan culture. At the Niaohuliang site, Archaeologists found the remains of a large sacrificial temple and the statue of a goddess, important evidence of the development of humankind from a clan society toward a more civilized society. The most representative object of Hongshan culture is this jade carving of the dragon. Archaeologists have speculated that the jade dragon might have been the totem of people living in this region and the very source of the dragon culture of the Chinese nation. Based on his studies of many years, renowned Chinese archaeologist Su Bingqi came to the conclusion that the dragon was the totem of the clan that was led by Huang Di. Archaeological finds related to the clan led by Huang Di all show that they lived during the same period of Hongshan culture. However, this conclusion is worlds apart from the assertion found in historical records, claiming that the clan of Huang Di originated along the Wei Shui River in Shanxi Province. 更加重要的是呢，就目前考古发现的诸多文化类型中，红山文化在中国文明起源中曾是遥遥领先。特别是玉珠龙的出现，它不仅可以揭示出中国文明的起源，而且对于了解皇帝时代的历史和文化，也是意义重大。The tomb marked M75 contains only one human skeleton lying on its back, with its head turning to the right. The jade carving of the pig dragon was placed next to the neck of the deceased. According to the stature of the body and the state of the teeth, Li Juan was able to conclude that the deceased had been a woman of about 40 years of age. After Li Juan had gathered enough initial information about the tomb, he contacted Chia Fei to report the discovery. <laughs> 听到这个消息呢，十分的高兴。这一发现，觉得非同小可。这说明呢，在距今五千年前后，张家口地区是属于红山文化圈的。如果红山文化正像苏炳基先生所说的，是皇帝部族创造的文化，那么这就为皇帝占炎帝与皇帝占蚩尤呢，找到了。具有说服力的依据，也就接近了历史的真实。The Zhangjialiang burial site not only yielded the jade pig dragon, but also several dozen pottery objects that were also typical of Hongshan culture. The archaeologists had been scouring the Sangan River Valley in Hebei Province for many years in the hope of finding evidence of prehistoric settlements there. The Zhangjialiang site was a major discovery, particularly as it dated from around the time when Huangdi is supposed to have lived. Thank you for staying with us on today's New Frontiers. I'm Ji Xiangjun from CCTV International. Bye for now.